Hello everyone, I'm Ben with the BTC Sessions. I'm here in Calgary, Canada at Chinook Center and today I'd like to talk to you about the Digital Bitbox. Now this is a hardware wallet that can help you store your Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic and ERC20 tokens. Now it's set at a lower price point than its competitors so let's see how it holds up. All right, so first let's take a look at what the digital bitbox ships with. Uh, it's very minimalist packaging, just a cardboard box. Uh, you can open it up here, and inside you get the device itself and uh, a micro SD card, and then it tells you to get started at digitalbitbox.com slash start. Uh, so let's just take a look at the device really quick. It is essentially just a USB key uh, with a slot for a, uh, a micro SD in the side. A little bit hard to see here, but there's a slot there uh, and you can insert it shipped here with an eight gigabyte micro SD. And that is it, that's all that's in the package. And just to take a look here, insert like so. That is the device there. Now the top here you can't see, but it has a, a touch button, so it's touch, touch sensitive, uh, and there's a light here that will flash when inserted. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna head over to digitalbitbox.com slash start, and down below you're gonna see your options to download the software necessary to run this item. Now I'm on a Mac, uh, but of course if you're running Linux or Windows, you can click either of those, or you can head over to see their source hub, uh, you can head over to see the source code on GitHub by clicking there. Now I have already downloaded and installed this app, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open it up, and I have not set it up yet, so we're gonna do this from scratch. All I need to do first is plug in my device. Once it is plugged in, I will be prompted here to insert a wallet name and a password which I need to repeat to confirm. Super easy, this is one of the nice things about the digital bitbox is the ease of use when setting it up. Uh, you don't have to write down a ton of words. So I'm gonna name this wallet test. I'm gonna have a simple password for simplicity's sake for this video. I'm just gonna do one, two, three, four and I'm gonna repeat that below, one, two, three, four and I'll click submit. And that is it, that is the entire setup process. So uh, what it's doing right now is saving my password, encrypting my wallet, um, and creating a backup onto the SD card. So you can see those things listed here, wallet created, backup saved to SD. Now, this will bump me to my main screen here. Now, please note, once you have uh, created your wallet, you do not need to keep the SD card in the device itself anymore. Uh, in fact, it's much better if you store that SD card somewhere safe, somewhere separate from the device itself. That way, if you lose either the SD or the device, you do have a backup which you can use to access your funds. Uh, for further information of how to access your funds if you lose the device and you only have the SD, then head over to the FAQ on their site. So here I'm bumped to the main history screen. I can see the name of my wallet, my balance, and down below this is where any previous transactions would be shown. The receive screen, pretty basic. You've got your QR code that you can scan and send funds to. You get the address down below that you can copy and paste. If you'd like to generate a new address, you can hit that. Um, now, one thing to note uh, here is that the address starts with a one, which means it is not a SegWit address, and SegWit is not supported on this wallet. Unfortunately, hopefully that will change in the future, but at the time of making this video, uh, that is not the case. So if we pop over to the send tab, again, available balance, you can paste in an address here in the to address field, or you can click this little button to see me. And there, if I scan my address, uh, you can see that it auto populates in the to address field, uh, which I can then use to send. Now below that, I can designate the amount of Bitcoin I would like to send, and I have a drop down to pick what kind of a fee I would like to attach to that transaction. Uh, 
Now here in the options tab, you have things like managing your backups, two-factor authentication, and expert settings. And here, multi-sig, I will get into that momentarily, how to set up a multi-sig wallet. Okay, so let's go through how to do a basic receive and then a basic send. So receive, super easy. All you're gonna do is you're gonna hit your receive screen and if you're sending to yourself, you're gonna open up a Bitcoin wallet that you have. Now this could be on your computer or on your phone and you're simply going to either scan this QR code here or copy and paste this address down below. So I have a uh, a wallet open on my phone. I'm just gonna simply scan the QR code on the screen. I'm going to send over some Bitcoin to this address. At this point, I will be able to navigate over to my history and see that incoming transaction. Now, it's important to note here that it does take one confirmation on the blockchain before you will see an incoming balance on your digital bitbox. Uh, it has now been one confirmation, so we can see right here the amount of Bitcoin coming in, the address, and uh, this is kind of like a, a pie chart as it fills up with more confirmations. Uh, it will be full by the time it hits six confirmations. So let's figure out how to send Bitcoin from this wallet. Super easy, you're just gonna head over to send here. Uh, I need to import an address. So I could copy and paste an address right here, or I can use this little button to the right to grab a QR code, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna hit that button, and I'm going to hold that up. So now I have scanned an address. Um, I'm going to choose my fee, which for now, uh, let's just do economy. Okay. Um, and then how much do I want to send? Maybe I'll send over about half. So let's put uh, 0 0.0009. 0 0.0009. And I will create a transaction. Now, on the actual device itself, there is a light. And so there's a touch screen, or not a touch screen, but rather a touch button that lights up. I'm going to show you uh, what that looks like. And all I have to do is hold my finger to it just for a moment. So we can see here that this, this is lit up. I'm just gonna hold my finger to it and then momentarily on the screen here, this should approve and go through. There we go, broadcast transaction. So we can now see that I have sent part of the Bitcoin back to another address. Uh, and if I go to my history, we can see that transaction is waiting to be confirmed. Now, one of the other things I wanted to touch on here is the paired app for mobile. Uh, so you can downlist, download this from your app store. Uh, it's just called Digital Bitbox 2FA or two-factor authentication. All right, so um, when you go into your options, you're going to see a couple things that uh, deal with the mobile app. One is, of course, connect mobile app, and the other one is enable 2FA. Um, so first we're going to connect the app and see how that works. So I'm going to hit connect mobile app uh, and it says, would you like to repair your device and create a new key? I would hit yes. And it's going to bring up a QR code. So then when I take a look at the app, I'm going to open it up and it says checking connection. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to hit begin. So all you're doing is you're going to be watching the device and the device will flash as it did before when I plugged it in uh, and I'm going to count how many times the device itself flashes and then hit the corresponding number on the screen of my phone. So as soon as I hit begin, I've got to be watching the device. So I hit begin and I see the device. It has flashed four times. It has flashed four times again and four times again, once, I'll do one more, three. And at this point, I'm going to tap the touch screen on the top here, and 
there. It says that I was successfully paired. I hit continue, and now my app is paired to the device itself. So why would I want to pair this? What is this for? Well, this is actually meant uh, to enable you to do two things. Number one is two-factor authentication, where if you are sending funds, it asks you to confirm on the device or asks you to confirm on your phone. It's also to check that this receive screen is correct because if your system is compromised, really with any wallet, um, maybe the information represented on your screen here is not truthful. Um, you could have malware or uh, something that's injecting a fake address here that will go somewhere else perhaps. So on other devices like the Ledger or the Trezor, they have a screen on the device itself so that you can confirm it is the correct address. But the digital bitbox does not have a screen, so they've opted to have this pairing app. So let's just take a look at what this looks like on the device. So here on my screen on the computer, it says verify address securely. So what I can do is I can hit that button and then on my phone, what we're going to see is it brings up the address that is on the computer screen. I can see it starts with 1DU2, all right, same address. I can also hit scan and it will scan and verify that the QR code is correct as well. And it says, yes, that is the correct address. I can read and verify it again. Now, the other option here is to use it as a two-factor authentication. So let's see about turning that on. So again, in the options menu, all I'm gonna hit is enable 2FA. Now it says, do you have a backup? Is the mobile app verification working? Yes, it was. Uh, 2FA disables backups and mobile app pairing. The device must be erased to exit 2FA mode. So. What does this mean? It means that the second I do two-factor authentication, I will no longer be able to make another backup. I will no longer be able to access the pairing menu to repair my phone. So if I, if I wasn't paired at all, um, then I would not be able to do that. I would have to erase the device and I'd have to go to my backup to restore it. Uh, but I am okay with this, so I'm gonna hit yes. And once again, it's gonna ask me to touch the button on top of the device for a few seconds before it is approved. So I just did that and it says my device is now locked. Fantastic. All right, so you can see now that some of these options are grayed out. All right, now let's take a look. If I go to send and I scan an address, so let's try that again. I'm gonna bring up my wallet here and I'm gonna scan an address. Okay, so I've scanned that into uh, the device here and I'm going to send, let's send about half of that again, 0 0.0005. And yeah, I'm not worried about the speed here, so I'm gonna just do economy, create transaction. Now, what happens here? On my device, on my phone, I get a notification that says, you're trying to send this much Bitcoin. Do you wanna do that? Now I could accept, I could get further details, or I could cancel it. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cancel it for right now, but if I wanted to go through, I just hit accept. Now, one of the things about enabling 2FA is that if you want to do um, any of these functions here, manage backups, create new wallet, um, reconnecting a mobile app or some of the more expert settings that I will get into in a moment, uh, you essentially have to wipe the device and pull from the backup that is made on the SD card you insert it. So let's just take a look at how to reset the device and how to open that backup from your device. Now keep in mind that your device, the digital bitbox itself functions without the SD card, just as a regular wallet, um, and you shouldn't actually keep the SD card in it while you are actively using it. You should only pull out that SD card if you need to access your backup. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm 
Already in the Options tab, I'm going to go down and I'm going to hit Reset Device. Now, in order to do that, I need to again hold my finger to the top of the device for three seconds just to approve it. All right, and that is it. It resets the entire device. It is now uninitialized and it needs to be set up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name this test one. I'm gonna do the same password for now. One, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna hit submit. So what I've done there is I've actually created a new wallet. Now, why did I do that? That's not what I was aiming to do. I want to access my backup. Well, in order to access the backup, you actually have to get into the main screen here, which it would be nice if on the main screen, when you first enter the software, you had the option to import a wallet. But that is not what I'm seeing here uh, at the time of creating this video. So what I actually want to do is I want to hit Manage Backups. I go to Manage Backups and I'm going to look for my old wallet, Test. And I'd like to restore that wallet. So not Test 1 that I just created, I want the original one. So I hit Restore and I'm going to enter the device password that was used during creating that wallet, which was 1234. And I'm going to hit OK. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to hold down my finger to the top of the device for a few seconds here, and there we go. So I can go back to the history, and I can see my old transactions, and there's still a balance on the device. Now, if I want to, I can go back to Options, Manage Backups, and I don't really want that other wallet that I just created, so I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to hit Erase. Do you want to erase the backup for Test 1? Yes, I would and I'm going to leave that one be so I can just X out of that screen and I have access to everything that I need now. Now I want to show you one of the cooler things that I really like about this wallet and that is in the expert settings here under the options tab there is a tab that says hidden wallet password. So why would you use this? And to answer that, I'm going to refer to the Digital Bitbox FAQ, which is right here. And it says, what if a government or bully forces me to open my wallet? And it says, use plausible deniability. A secondary password can open a hidden wallet. Put some change there to add plausibility. Or, in case you are forced to recover a wallet from a backup, entering the wrong password will create a valid but different wallet. So essentially, what you would be doing here is creating a decoy wallet. So what I would do is maybe I have this password as 12345. 12345. And I'm going to hit set hidden wallet password. Once again, I'm going to hold my finger to the top of the device for a few seconds until that command is executed. And now nothing changes here. This wallet is still functional, but if I go ahead and I unplug my device, so I'm just going to quickly unplug it from my USB drive here, okay, and I'm going to plug it in once again. So as I plug this in, it should prompt me for a password. Yes, and now I'm going to enter the decoy password, one, two, three, four, five, and hit enter. When it unlocks the device, it shows that I have a zero balance. Now I can send some Bitcoin here as recommended in the FAQ on digitalbitbox.com, but uh, essentially what you're seeing is an entirely different wallet and nobody would be any the wiser that there's any other account associated with this and beyond that how do you prove that even if somebody assumes so so it's just a nice little security method to allow you to have plausible deniability of what's on the device if say somebody is hovering over you forcing you to access your funds so i'll just remove this once more and i'll plug it back in and let's go back to my original wallet, one, two, three, four, enter. And here I can see my real balance and 
I'm set to use it as I please. Now, beyond just using the digital BitBox for its native app here, uh, you can also use the digital BitBox to access myetherwallet.com, which enables you to transact with Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, and all ERC20 tokens. So all you have to do um, is you're going to navigate over to myetherwallet.com. Please double check every every single letter here to make sure you're going to the right place. Uh, and then you're going to hit send Ether and tokens. And right below you see an option for digital BitBox. You're going to hit that and you're going to simply enter your password. One, two, three, four. And it will connect. Now at this point, uh, this can look a little scary, but really just do the automatically selected one that says digital bitbox. And then you're going to go down and I usually just use the first address provided, but you can use any of these and there's a lot more addresses that will be designated under your digital bitbox. So just go ahead and hit one, hit unlock your wallet, and this takes you to your main screen of your Ethereum and Ethereum tokens. Now, if you do not know how to use my Ether wallet, I did an in-depth video of how to deal with it, including ERC20 tokens. You can go ahead and take a look at that in the links below. Uh, I'm not going to get into a demonstration of how to send and receive using my Ether wallet here. Now let's just take a look at one last thing that I missed here and that is the final tab on the Digital Bitbox app and it is for multi-sig. Now this would be done using the Copay wallet which I also have open here. So let's take a look. Uh, so if I've got Copay open and I want to do a multi-sig wallet uh, which is a wallet that requires two or more signatures in order to send. Um, I can do that and pair it with the digital BitBox. Now, how do I do that? Within Copay, you can create a new wallet. You can create a shared wallet. Um, you'd name it DBB, maybe. My name is Copay. Copay Ben, we'll say. Uh, what coin do I want to use? Well, Bitcoin. Uh, and number of co-pairs. There's two of us because I'm just going to have it between two devices. Number of required signatures, well, two I'm going to say. Now you can structure this however you like, but uh, yeah, two, two of two would be great. And I'm going to hit create two of two wallet. Now once this is created, this is my invitation to any other uh, party that is going to be using this wallet. So I can just copy this invite here by clicking on it. And then over in my digital bitbox, I'm going to hit join Copay wallet. It's going to open up uh, a dialog box to paste in the invitation code. I'm going to hit OK. And now I have successfully joined the wallet. So that means that any time anytime there is a transaction trying to be done from this particular wallet here, I will need to approve it via my digital BitBox and vice versa. Both have equal access, but there needs to be a signature from each, uh, from each program in order to successfully send that transaction. So all in all, what do I think of the digital BitBox? Well, I think that the device is nice and compact, easy to put on a keychain. Uh, I like the ease of use when setting it up. And I like that you can uh, that you can pair the app with it for two-factor authentication. Um, I also really like the hidden wallet password um, and the fact that it ties in with myetherwallet.com to enable Ethereum and ERC20 tokens. Now on the downside, a few of the things that I hope to see improved in the future on this device would be that there is not an option for send all. So uh, you kind of have to play around and figure out the maximum amount that you can 
send including the fee. Uh, so to see that put in would be fantastic. Also, there's no native currency, so I can't really see a dollar amount of what my current holdings are. Um, I did come across an issue when trying to scan SegWit addresses, uh, although pasting SegWit addresses into the send field worked just fine. I would love to see SegWit implemented across all addresses in this device. Um, beyond that, the import wallet, it was a little bit of a pain having to set up a new wallet, then go into manage backups, and then restore from an old backup. It would be nice if that was an option on the main screen when you first plug in a fresh device uh, versus starting a new. So that is about it. Uh, the other thing that I would like to mention is that this device is probably one of the cheaper ones on the market. Now, I got sent this over uh, by a friend, Mike. He runs a site called Crypto Asylum out of Vancouver. Uh, great guy. And uh, he sent me one over one to test out. Uh, so I, I did get this one for free. Uh, but beyond that, I'm not being paid to make this video. Uh, I just wanted to give him a shout out, say a big thank you. Um, but yeah, you can see that the price point of the digital BitBox here uh, is quite a bit below uh, some of the options by about 50 bucks to the next highest competitor. Um, do I think that this is as good as its competitor? competitors uh, maybe for the price point yeah I do still really like my ledger I still really like my Trezor I would say that the ledger blue is a little expensive but it is nice having the screen um, but for a cheaper price point this is definitely pretty spot-on um, Furthermore, I will mention that uh, Mike has offered uh, to give a promo code for anybody that sees this video. Uh, you can get, I believe, 10% off the purchase of a digital BitBox. And all you have to do is use the code or the promo code DBB Sessions, and you'll get yourself 10% uh, off. So anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Um, hopefully you found this informative, and I'll see you next time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe, drop a tip if you're able to, and share this video. Also, if you'd like to help the show in another way, check out my affiliate links down below to grab yourself a hardware wallet or a t-shirt. I'll see you guys next time on the BTC Sessions.